There is some sort of big old kicky bally tournament going on in the Middle East, and for the first time in my life I am not only interested, but deeply amused. And not really because of the, the sporting part of it. Oh, I'm sure football is a fun and engaging sport for those of you who lack the mental acuity to engage in real hobbies like Warhammer and video gaming. But what I find so interesting is the ongoing conflict between two near equally authoritarian, tyrannical and censorious forces going on in the background, with the near entirety of the mainstream media establishment and the walkist hordes on one side, and Qatar and FIFA on the other, both desperately attempting to enforce their own brand of tyrannical censorship upon the other. And so far, Qatar is winning, as seven European soccer teams backtracked on wearing rainbow armbands at the Qatar World Cup after FIFA threatened to sanction players. Oh no! Consequences for our political activism! <laughs> Nobody told us this would happen, which mm, will lead me into a point in a second, but this was the campaign here, the One Love Armband, meant to show solidarity with the LGBTQIP… Uh, black? <laughs> community, I guess, and I throw the P in there on purpose as well, because the name of the campaign is One Love, All Is Love, which I'm pretty sure is the literal motto of the MAP movement. <laughs> but oh well details, eh? So what I find so amusing about this, because it's not really the banning of the symbol, who cares, it's everywhere these days, it's common parlance, it's it is a political symbol that has gained so much power and so much protection in the West that it is worn like a shield, as you can see right here, frankly. But what I find so funny about this is that the reaction to this, our number one priority at the World Cup is to win the games, says the Dutch, the Dutch, Dutch Sucker Federation. Because at the end of the day, when the chips are down, when there is an actual consequence for their actions, not a single solitary one of these nations, not a one of these teams, not a one of these multi-millionaire sports superstars had the courage of their convictions. Not a one of them. Not a one of them dared to go onto the pitch when there might be a backlash for their actions. Because of them, this is not an actual icon. This doesn't mean anything. It has no message. It has no value. It has no soul. It has no gravitas. It is simply a piece of cloth they wear on their arm because their manager told them to. And that is all it has ever been. As the uh, the English captain Harry Kane says, he was disappointed not to be wearing the armband. Oh, he was disappointed, was he? <laughs> I'm very sorry, but I'm not going to do it anyways. And here's the let me let me hammer this point home here, shall I? Because this isn't just a random little thing. It's not something that came out of nowhere. The U.S. soccer team has been doing this program for five years now, and they were intending to bring this icon, the USA Shield, without the red and blue, but instead the rainbow colors, including the black, the bra black or brown stripe as well, because, you know, they're part of the lesbian community now, I guess. But anyways, it's a five-year commitment, and the Qatari wag their fingers and they go, oh, consequences, oh no, we can't have that. I mean, it's not like we actually believe any of this stuff. Because they too back down. And this is Qatar we're talking about here. Qatar, a very religious Muslim nation. <laughs> they are not very liberal. They're not very progressive. They do not treat their gays very well at all. If there were any time, any point, any country on earth in which you would which you would actually be justified to make a statement in defense of the LGBTQ etc etc community, it would be now, and they didn't. Only in the West, only when they are safe in Western countries, when all of their privileges are already guaranteed. Gay people are not 
persecuted in the West. In fact, we have laws that specifically punish people harder for committing a crime against a gay person because they are gay. That is how much protection we offer them in the West. They don't in Qatar. In fact, we can say quite obviously that the Qataris are really bad people when it comes to gay rights. And again, I have neither. I've, I've got no sides in this one. None whatsoever. I think they're both groupings of very, very bad people. And yet, well, this would be the time. Yeah, okay, stand up, make a challenge, make the point, walk out there proud and loud, head held up high and say, I will take that yellow card, which is the punishment for wearing it. I'll take it. I'll walk out there round two as well. I'll take the red card because this symbol matters to me. It is more than just a piece of clothing I wear on my arm. It is a message. It is a symbol of equality, equity, blah, 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 whatever you think it means. But they didn't because they are all cowards that is why i have the courage of my convictions <laughs> like listen here if saying that the lesbian kiss in light bus light here got me a strike or when i said that it wasn't a big deal when that gets my channel a strike what do you think this will huh? <laughs> the very least this is gonna get demonetized by the way here Allow me the opportunity as well, since I am not a multi-millionaire soccer star. I'll uh, give you a link to my Patreon at the top of the description down below, because I'm probably going to need it. I'm going to risk taking this hit, moving into one of the most lucrative seasons in the entirety of YouTube. Because I do give a shit. I want to tell you, I want to show you what immense, cowardly hypocrites these people are. Harry Klein here. Harry Kane is a coward. No question about it. All of these seven teams, the, the teams themselves, every last player on them, their managers, their, their ruling class, whoever runs them, the nations, all of them, cowards. Moral cowards. You can say a lot of mean things about the Qataris, but they have the courage of their convictions. <laughs> In fact, uh, so they might confiscate World Cup uh, rainbow flags to protect people. Why? Because as they say here, uh, you might get attacked <laughs> if, if you wear rainbow paraphernalia, if you carry a rainbow flag, if you show the LGBTQ icons, then the people in Qatar will recognize that for the Western political statement that it is, and that the West says it is, and they might beat the shit out of you. <laughs> because as wrong as you might think their convictions are, they do actually genuinely believe in them, and don't you just love it as well? So you have two competing worldviews here. You've got Qatar, and you've got the Virtue Singlers, right? Only one of these two believe in what they say, and so when they head ahead, the other one just simply shies away and bows down and does whatever the one with the conviction says. Because they can't just censor Qatar, they can't, they can't ratio them on social media. They can't yell, they don't care. They're oil billionaires. And the best part is, the, the teams even said, oh, hey, 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 can, can we wear the armbands, please? Please, we'll accept a fine because, you know, it's technically not against, it's technically against FIFA's rules to bring political icons onto the pitch, you know, trying to keep the sports and the politics separate and all of that. But you know what the Qatarists did? They simply didn't respond. <laughs> They <laughs> just said, no, we're not going to give you a fine. We're going to give you the punishment as written, a yellow card. And correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm not much of a football person, but a yellow card in and of itself doesn't mean much, does it? It, it's, it means that if you get a second one, you get a red card, which means you can no longer play in that game or even that tournament, maybe. But at the very least, then, you'd go onto the pitch the first round, eat the yellow card, make the statement, and then maybe go over to the sideline, you know, take it off all theatrically, hold it up in the air, throw it onto the, into the stands or something to make the statement. But again, there might be consequences for those actions. And if you don't believe in any of it, why would you take a consequence for something you didn't give a shit about, huh? Wow, bad people. And 
the piece de resistance, the final, the final little piece of it all, is of course that whilst the Western media establishment is calling the Qataris all kinds of mean things, oh, you know, they, they don't like the gays, they mistreat their migrant workers, all seems to be true by the way, the Qataris then turn right around and call them racists. <laughs> oh, oh, delicious. <laughs> Imagine, imagine somebody that has been on the left side of this this entire time, who, who calls themselves anti-racist unironically, having the brown person just walk up in their face and go, you're racist towards me, aren't you? And just watch the cogs in their head begin to spin as they're trying to figure out how to circle the square yet again. <laughs> like, I... This, there are few things I adore more than watching my political adversaries, both of them in this case, beat each other over the head with cudgels entirely of their own making. <laughs> it is delectable. It is. It's genuinely fantastic. Oh. I mean, it could be better. I suppose it could implode for both parties. That'd be funny. I mean, the... <laughs> The area they've placed this, uh, I mean, they've put it in Qatar. After a presumably a, a sizable bribe, there's been many, many allegations that the Qataris basically just bought this, and, well, you know, they are very, very rich, so who knows? But there is, there is no moral authority on either side of this debate. It is simply two equally morally stunted, censorious tyrants trying to tyrannize the other. And, hey, maybe if we're going to be extremely op um, optimistic about it, maybe somebody will even learn a lesson about this. I doubt it. But you never know. Miracles have happened before, right? <laughs> They're probably not on this magnitude. Parting the ocean is one thing. Making a wokeist realize that he might be a bad person. That's going to need more than a miracle from God. <laughs> Until next time, I've been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. Hopefully, have a good day.